One of the other issues we see in OLTP systems is people overconnecting their middleware or their applications to the database. In many times, we see applications with people trying to attempt to connect 32,000 connections to the database and even defining a requirement that they need 32,000 connections to the database to make their application perform correctly. The Real World Performance Group has done a lot of work into this area and we just dispute this area, this issue whenever we hear it. And it usually is a result of poorly defined middleware strategies. And so really what we wanted to do was show again via a demo what the impact is of running with too many connections to the database from your middleware. And we will make some references as we go along as to what the impact is in terms of availability as well as performance. Because in this application, and as we can see the screen here, we are actually running a, uh, a simulated web-based application running, if we go down the left-hand side, 9,600 threads, each submitting a gaming transaction every 550 milliseconds. What this results in is as hitting a transaction rate of about 16,000 transactions a second. Whilst this sounds fantastic, and each transaction has a response time of spending 39 milliseconds queued, waiting for a connection out of the Java connection pool, and 71 milliseconds actually executing the transaction inside the database. So we are using a connection pool, and but the key thing to note from at this point of view we're running 2048 connections to the database. If we actually look at the system as an overall point of view, we can see that the CPU is extremely busy, uh, over 80% in user space, 12% in system time. But what you'll also notice is we've got a lot of wait events inside the database, buffer busy waits, bu um, TX NQ on index contention, latch free, NQs, etc. Uh, quite common contention points that we see in a lot of Oracle databases. Now what we see a lot of people doing is good performance engineers spend their whole time focusing on these wait events and looking for a means of trying to make them go away um, via setting of init.ora parameters and uh, various other sort of platform related stuff without actually taking holistic view of the, the problem. This system that we're actually running on is actually just a 12 core system and we're running 2000 connections to the database so that the process to core ratio is extremely high and this is contrary to a lot of popular thinking is that if you want to make things scale over more and more CPUs you just add more and more connections so one of the first things we're going to do in this case is actually reduce the number of connections to the database and this would be my first recommendation uh, on seeing a system running like this I said you know, the, the only way to speed this one up is to get less connections to the database and try and impose a little bit more queuing in the middle tier. And in many cases, this causes a lot of disputes and argument between the middleware factions and the database administration factions within an organization. But let's just halve very quickly the number of connections to the database. And the thing, you, the thing to notice about as we resize the whole thing it actually takes quite a while to bring down the number of connections and re-establish a new connection pool of a thousand connections. Now, the reason I make this point is um, if you were doing a failover um, for reasons that could be related to a crash, a piece of hardware failure, when you set up a lot of connections from your middleware to your database server, re-establishing that connection pool takes a long time. and it should not, whilst people are able to recover their database at a transactional level and have the database open in a matter of seconds, it may take them actually a matter of minutes and seconds to actually get the connections to the database open. So it took quite a while while I was, I was talking. But you can see that basically now we're running with a thousand connections to the database. That's marked in the sessions here. And whilst we've improved things a little bit in the database, we've come down to about 30 milliseconds, and the queue time has really not improved at all. So we're still leaning towards 100 milliseconds response time to the user. Um, this kind of sort of helps debunk this myth that to get better performance, we just throw connections at the database. If it was nothing special, the performance at 2,000, 
and it's nothing at 1,000, there's certainly no motivation to go to 4,000 or 8,000 connections to the database, even though the fact we are trying to support independently 9,600 threads in the application server. You'll also notice that the wait events fundamentally have not changed at all in the database. What I'd like to do is very quickly have a look at Enterprise Manager and just have a look at that and see what it was recording as we move from 2,000 to 1,000 connections to the database. Looking at Enterprise Manager here, we can see when we were running with 2,000 connections to the database, we had almost every color of the rainbow in terms of wait events showing up in the uh, um, active session. When we dropped it down to 1,000, you can see that basically we have a lot less processes uh, in wait events, but there's similar sort of wait events showing up. Um, it's just the number of processes is halved. And the thing is to represent this whole area under this shape represents time spent in the database and time spent waiting. And you can see that a lot of the time is actually being spent waiting. And then by halving the number of connections to the database, the other thing to note is we made very little impact in the throughput of the system altogether. Um, all we've done is managed to drop that curve a little bit. And at this point uh, is when I would normally argue with the customer, say, let's go do something more radical and really reduce the number of connections to the database, and let's see what we can really do. And usually I get a lot of resistance and a lot of argument. And a lot of the problem is is people just have not spent the time um, re-revising their computer science. Um, how many people remember in their computer science class um, doing time sharing and recognizing that two processes running at the same time always took longer than two running one after the other? And this is being played out at a bigger scale um, when we're doing multi-user uh, highly concurrent database applications. And so with that in mind, I'm going to flip back to the application and we're going to get get my wishes and drop the connection count quite dramatically. So by dropping the connection count, I'm going to literally drop it down to a number less than 100, in this case 96. And again, the key thing to really notice as we do take this um, is that the failover is dramatically faster than it was before. Um, and the system comes alive much faster um, at this point in time. So it took us 10 seconds to pause and then to resize the pool it's back straight away and here comes the transaction rate coming straight back up on again. Now the thing to also notice as the transaction rate climbs again is to start looking at the response times. Before we were looking at queue times in the double digits into the up to about 50 milliseconds and very often times up to 71 milliseconds in the database. The thing to note is here we've got a queue time of one millisecond and a run time of maybe two milliseconds all in single digits. So we brought things down from about 100 milliseconds down to maybe two or three milliseconds in terms of response time. The other thing to really notice is if we go down to the bottom left is that we've now suddenly freed up about 20% of the CPU. And the only thing we did in this workload was change a number of connections to the database out of the JDBC connection pool. The workload is still coming at the database at the same rate. The only thing we have changed is the number of connections. So the other last thing to also note is all those wait events that we were seeing before have now disappeared. We're now entirely CPU bound. So the system is using less CPU, there's less wait events inside the database, and the response time is almost an order of magnitude faster. What's not to learn about learn from this? It's an extremely important lesson to learn and for all system architects to be aware that throwing connections at the database is not the way to achieve good performance. Likewise, throwing connections at the database literally makes failover and availability extremely difficult. And so with this in mind, we encourage architects to really think about how their connection architecture is put together. And just to finalize, we'll switch back to Enterprise Manager, and we'll just watch the trace there and see what shows up in Enterprise Manager. So the view that uh, any DBA would see of a well-connected well application that is someone has done their homework 
in terms of middleware and database interaction. Looking at Enterprise Manager, it's really quite simple to see. We've got an increment in performance in terms of transaction rate. And in fact, we noticed in the previous screen the CPU was not being fully utilized. We could probably drive this a little harder. But the thing to really notice from the bottom of this is we're all CPU bound. All the other weight events just disappeared. Okay. Now, in today's modern web-based applications, response time is an extremely important aspect and also consistency of response time. Um, sudden timeouts and delays and inconsistency in response time can trigger ripple effects all the way up through the middleware, all the way out to the browsers. And so ha being able to have a highly deterministic, predictable response time makes everybody's life a lot easier. At that point, thanks very much.